difference the day that Jesus resurrected and overcame death and in the world we're living I hope that you just know how much Jesus loves you today and that he's out ahead of us no matter what we're facing and that we're blessed so it's great to have you and happy Easter uh, just a couple of brief announcements we have uh, two visitors today I think the one should be coming soon Patrick from Uganda and his family He's a uh, missionary that we've been supporting, so a little bit of an update from him. Uh, we have our sweetheart dinner coming up, so we typically do this in February, but it'll be May 22nd. If you've never had a chance to participate, I uh, encourage you to come. It's a special time. We have a brunch afterwards, which is catered, and there's a sign up in the vestibule for that. So. And then uh, the Wellsboro men will be here on May 15th. So that's always an exciting day, um, so I hope you can be here for that. Do we have any others, Pastor Gary? All right. Jeff will get us ready.
Beautiful, Beth. Thank you. Please rise and we'll open with our opening hymns, starting with number 367. Christ the Lord is risen today. Dear God, thank you so much for coming to earth and dying for our sins, that we, by believing in you, could have eternal life and know that we'll spend forever with you in heaven rejoicing. I ask that you are glorified by all that happens here today and that you would meet us all where we're at and help us to become more like your son. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to go with our next hymn, which is number 357.
Wow, you guys are professional grade today. You may be seated. Great singing. I'm going to ask Patrick to come forward. Patrick, I need to get one of these shirts, okay? These are, this is cool. So um, Patrick is from Uganda. Um, Just a a little bit about him. First of all, um, last time he was here, uh, just uh, as a single man, um, with an orphanage, and today he's bringing a lovely wife and three ch- children, so I hope you get a chance to meet them afterwards. But uh, Patrick was kind of forced on the street when his second parent died in Kampala. It's about the size of Philadelphia. He was living in the slums under a porch, taking care of his uh, sister, who was two years younger. And uh, talking open sewers, running, it's a pretty rough place. And a woman from the state of Washington befriended him, rented him an apartment, and he started an orphanage at age 16. And I try to think about my life and what I've accomplished, and I feel that he's already accomplished more than I ever will. And today he has orphanages, the Boys Home, Girls Home, Village of Hope for uh, older kids, and even more ministries, continues to have a ministry in the slums. Uh, Hundreds of kids being impacted. But I didn't ask him to talk about that today. The last time we were praying for Patrick, he had been imprisoned in Uganda and also Rwanda and was sent here just on a moment's notice last Mother's Day. And he was detained at ICE as an illegal immigrant and he's currently filing for political asylum. And he wanted to talk about his kids and his ministry and I hope that if you wanna learn more about that after the church that you would talk with him And he'll be back later this fall or summer to talk about that. But I really give an Easter one to talk about his most recent experience. So welcome, Patrick. Good to have you. Trying to think what, he probably doesn't need a mic, but what you hear maybe. Is this good? I'm going to be a singer. (laughs) I see this in a movie when they're so fancy. Praise the Lord. I'm so privilege to be here, and uh, happy Easter for everyone. You all look nice. <laughs> he's risen, right? <laughs> amen, amen. Uh, he's a, I'm Patrick Senyonjo. That's my name. What is my last name? <laughs> yes, so um, I come from Uganda, and I've been here probably six, seven years ago, and um, I was all by myself, very happy to be here, and uh, today I brought you all my family. (laughs) I have three kids, Uh, they're just back somewhere, I don't know, and uh, you'll you'll get to meet them. But uh, Steve and Karen, they've been telling me that uh, Cedaron members, they've been praying for you. Because some of the members, he actually came to Uganda and visited all the orphans. And I, I, I note some faces here <laughs> that have been to Uganda. So um, I'm so happy to be here again. But um, last year, 2020 and 2021 hasn't been so good to me. And uh, there have been a lot of prayers all around going for my life. But I still say God is good. I'm still here. And then I'm able to talk to you and, uh, you know, witness his goodness. Sorry about my accent. (laughs) It might not be good. But uh, uh, I was detained April last year. I was detained in a a, a government, they call it like safe houses. And uh, just because of the political... uh, uh, affairs. You guys had uh, your elections with Biden and, and uh, Trump, right? And then in Uganda, we have our president who has been in, in power for the past uh, 38 years, and he has been collapsed. There's lots of death, there's killings and all that kind of stuff by the states, by the state. But uh, there was a friend of mine uh, who raised up and say, you know, I'm going to try be the next president of Uganda. And uh, whoever that was uh, supporting him was on the opposition side of the government. And uh, I was a lead of a certain group, 
and all the leaders and the members of the leaders were all detained and put in jail. There's so much torture that is being done over there. And uh, among those members, I was one of those that uh, was uh, beaten. I was, uh, your, your nails are pulled out. Uh, you, uh, this, you know, like uh, your back, the, you know, they, they have uh, what, you, what I call, what you call, you know, like, they will never scrub away. Like you always have scars forever for your life and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, my last time was still last year uh, in, uh, in April when I was, I was taken to Rwanda, is our next country, and uh, I was put in a detention center for almost a month and I wasn't even eating. They put in a small little thing and then every morning you wake up they, they call you in a, your little room and uh, undercover. It's like a, a house like this, but if you go down, there is a go down there. There are like, the small sections that they put you in and they lock you like uh, I've seen sometimes you guys respect your dogs so much, but sometimes uh, when you don't want the, the dog to run around, so that small little cage that you, they put in the, the uh, and then you're not, you're not given food, they give you water, uh, they give you water, and then after two, three days, they give you food. Like that, that's the, the routine. So if they give you water today, tomorrow you're not going to eat, and then the next day you're going to have food without water or anything. You go in your small bucket there, uh, do everything. Number one, number two, everything there. And um, so it was. It wasn't so rough. By the time I got here. Uh, I, uh, I, I had bruised my, my, my uh, ankles, my knees, my back, and uh, my ham, I think. Uh, so everything was, was solid. Like, every joint was solid because of like, uh, the torture and the beatings and all that kind of stuff. And uh, praise the Lord, I'm here alive. I got, uh, and then I, when I got here, thinking that, you know, now I've survived Uganda, I'm going to America, and then where I will get a uh, good life. And not good life, but uh, I, I will be taken as a person, and then, they, and then here comes, and then you go to ICE, they put you back to you and the cups, and then all my uh, uncles were all sorting, and then they give you the, the chain over here, they put it over here, and then all the way down, and I'm like, I, can't, I cannot walk. They say, oh, oh, we are sorry, that's the... That's the way how the routine goes. You've got to have all the, your legs and everything on a chain. I was like, okay, I had to go, but I still survived. And they took me in a detention center. And um, I called Karen. <laughs> I think they were here. It was a Sunday thing. I think, was it a Sunday or something? So they told me, who do you want to call? So I was like, and you called Karen. And then they called, they called Steve, I think, from your hospital. And then um, they, uh, after, after that, they couldn't get hold of them. And then they, uh, they took me to detention center for a month, almost a month, because I was there 9th to 26th of May. So, yeah, that's my story. And um, I've been so overwhelmed by the prayers. And uh, I thank God for you all. Thank you for praying for me and my family, but also there's a lot of other uh, political, uh, political um, people that are, you know, my brothers and, uh, and friends and uh, brothers and sisters that are still in the detention center, still tortured. Most of them have been killed and uh, most of them have been killed and then put their bodies somewhere and then their relatives, they have to find them. Others are in detention center, they cannot talk. And they've, they've, they've gone through all kind of, um, uh, you know, pain. So that's, that's what is, uh, is happening in Uganda right now. So you can pray for the country as well. Um, yeah. Thank you very much.
I'm sure you get the gist of what he's been through and as we think about Easter and what our Savior did for us and came out of it. So you're currently filing for political asylum, and that's a long process, but we're hopeful he's living in Indiana. He has his own place with his family, and he's uh, working hard, and he's providing for his family. So he's a blessing. Continue to pray. Your next uh, event will be in August, right? You have a hearing in August? Yes. So we'll be praying and have you back this summer to talk about the kids and the ministry. So thank you very much. All right, we'll go into our time of praise and prayer. Uh, any praises today? Snow? I certainly want to praise you. Yeah. I appreciate everybody praying for me the last few weeks. I had a stroke down in the last week. Pretty well recovered. Keep me in prayer. Yes, Jim scared us. Certainly no more than Joyce was scared, I'm sure. But it's great to have you back and uh, that you're looking good. Pray for your healing and, and your journey. So thank you for sharing, Jim. Other praises and prayers that we have today. Nobody's praising the snow out there today? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Prayer, what's that? Prayer request. Uh, we have a number of unspoken requests today. Be praying for Jim Ludwig. Praying for Charlie Ludwig. Any update on him? Coming along? Coming along. That's good. Beth, praying for your mom. Continue to pray for her. Praying for Stephen Ann Vossen. They're moving. Um, and so mercy there. Bob Bailey. Um, and uh, we're praying for uh, Mary Ann, Zach, and Aiden. Any other prayer requests that we have today? Continue to pray for Jude. For Jude. Thank you. He's going through a long, hard weekend. That's a motorcycle accident for a 15-year-old. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, we do come into your gates with thanksgiving today as we celebrate this Easter and celebrate the, the truth that you are risen, risen indeed, and that makes all the difference, and we give you all adoration, praise, laud, glory, honor, and thanksgiving. We uh, confess, Lord, that at times we stumble in this world, we sin in thought, word, and deed, and we just lift those moments to you, Lord, and ask uh, for your guidance and helping us to turn from our sin and trust in your word that when we confess our sin and turn, turn from it, that we are, in fact, forgiven. Thank you for that promise, and we thank you for the thanksgiving uh, in our lives, Lord. We're thankful for Patrick and his family being with us this weekend and being able to share his story and pray that it'll be an inspiration for others that no matter what you're going through, that you, in fact, have God with you. And we just thank you for our country. We pray for our military around the globe. We continue to pray for our freedoms that we enjoy. We thank you for this beautiful valley. And thank you for our families and this time of Easter. And just uh, thank you for this church. And we just pray that uh, we would be faithful, that there would be many written in the Lamb's Book of Life because of the work of this congregation. We do have prayer requests to you this day. We think of those unspoken requests. We pray for uh, those people in the Ukraine uh, for the senseless war that's going on by Russia. Pray that you would intervene and stop that, Lord. We pray for uh, Jim. I give you praise for his recovery so far and just commit his full recovery to you, Lord. We pray for Charlie Ludwig as well on his recovery. Pray for Mary Ann Aiden. <laughs> Zach, Jude, pray for Beth's mom, for Steve and Ann Dawson, for Bob Bailey. And we pray in your name, Lord, the words that you taught, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to have uh, junior church today. You doing that, Kathy? Thank you for your faithfulness. Anybody wants to go back with Kathy? 
And we'll be prepared to do our offering if our uh, ushers could get ready for offering. Thank you. Dear God, we thank you for these gifts, um, this act of worship, and we pray that we would be faithful, that these gifts would make a difference in building your kingdom here on earth. Amen. Continue to stand. We'll sing our next hymn, number 362, Celebrate Jesus. So I'm going to be the Apostle John today, so that's the uh, second visitor that we have, and happy Easter, he is risen. 
It's really an honor to be with you here this Easter. You know, I was there when the original Easter story happened, and Pastor Gary had told me that you guys were going through the book of John and that it would be a good idea if I could come and share what it was like to be there, that original Easter. I understand Pastor Steve brings in a guest every year, and Thomas, who was here last summer, sends his, uh, his blessings to you. So before I kind of share about that special Easter, I want to get out of the way one of the primary questions I get whenever I'm speaking somewhere, and that is that people want to know, why is my gospel different than Matthew, Mark, and Luke's? It doesn't seem to follow in the same pattern. Well, of course, it really isn't my gospel. It was the Lord who really led me to write it, the Holy Spirit. And it gave me the sole purpose of my book in John 20, 31, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. You know, to be honest, I really never felt led to write whenever I was with Jesus or even after. You know, Matthew was always carrying around that book and he was recording everything that the master was doing. And then Mark had Peter to help guide him, and, you know, Luke was a companion of Paul. And honestly, I thought they had done a great job of recording the life of Jesus in those three synoptic gospels that really supported one another. You know, those of us who were living at the time of Jesus had a lot of proof of the resurrection. In Matthew 27, he tells us that when Jesus died, the curtain ripped at the top of the temple and the earth shook and the rock split and people came up out of their graves and they were seen by many. We also know that Jesus in 1 Corinthians, Paul tells us that he was shown to Peter and then to the 12 and then at one point to more than 500 at once. And of course, the church that came after his resurrection had 3,000 added to them on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2. And the early church did so many signs and wonders that many knew the truth that Jesus had resurrected. I remember when Peter and I were walking into the temple and there was a lame beggar there and he was asking for money. And Peter looked at him and he said, gold and silver I do not have. But what I do have is the power of the Jesus Christ of Nazareth healing. Get up and be healed. And he raised him up and he leaped around the temple court. But over time, memories faded. Maybe you can relate. Maybe at one point you had a relationship with Jesus that was alive and vibrant. And maybe today you're just here kind of going through the motions Life has been tough, two years of COVID, and who knows where this war is headed. The economy. Easter's a great time to renew that passion that you once had with Christ. New generations came as well who didn't have that firsthand witness. And the reminder to new generations today that your faith has to be your own. It can't be your parents'. Well, the false teachings started to come into the church. They were saying that Jesus really wasn't the Son of God, that He really wasn't fully human while He was here, and that they were downplaying the power of sin and that He had on people's lives. Maybe you can relate to false teaching in the church today. We keep up with things, you know, up there and see it happening even today. So God called me to write decades after the other Gospels, and I was led to write different, to illustrate other perspectives on the master's journey. My, my real focus was on the last week of his life, that crucifixion, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. In fact, out of my 21 chapters from 11 to 21 is all focused on the last week and later in Jesus' life. And as I was led to do that, I mean, it became clear that, I mean, the resurrection, that's really it, isn't it? I mean, without it, it's just a good story. It's a baby in a manger. And without the resurrection, it's like every other so-called religion on earth. It ends with a dead person laying somewhere. 
But Jesus defeated death. We saw him, we talked with him, we sat and ate a meal with him. Heck, Thomas even stuck his hand in his side where the spear was. Yes, the resurrection, that first Easter, I remember it like it was just yesterday. You know, it started all so magical. I mean, there was that raising of Lazarus, which was unbelievable. And then we had that feast at Simon Lepers with the honoring Jesus and Lazarus. And Mary poured out all that perfume at Jesus' feet, and it filled the room. And then that triumphant entry, and then we went into the Passover feast. I have to admit, I still didn't get it. As one of Jesus' inner circle, I had heard from the time of the transformation, Jesus telling me that he would have to suffer and die. But I just didn't get it. I kept thinking that this was his moment, that his kingdom would be established, and it was going to happen now. But things turned dramatically. Judas left the dinner. I didn't know what was going on, but I really never trusted him. I felt like he took money from the change box. You know, no one ever plans to be an enemy of God. They get there by gradual process of disobedience of God's law. And Judas ultimately decided to yield to Satan instead of Jesus. And I'd warn you to be on guard yourselves. Well, the Garden of Gethsemane was intense. In Luke 22, he was on that rock of agony, Jesus, and he was literally dripping blood as sweat. And he asked me to pray for one hour. And I was overcome by this tiredness that I had never felt, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't stay awake for even one hour. And I'll tell you that if I failed my master at that time when he needed me most, he still loved me. I can tell you, you've done nothing That's beyond his love today, if you feel like you've failed him at some point in your life. Well, suddenly a mob appeared, and I begged Jesus to just go the 200 yards over the Mount of Olives and disappear into the wilderness. But he didn't, and he said, I am, and they all fell back. And he could have walked out, but he didn't. Then Peter grabbed that sword and sliced off the ear of Malachus, the servant's, the high priest's servant. But Jesus healed him, and he said his father could call legions if he needed. What was he, not to drink the cup that his father had given him? I still thought he might walk right through the crowd without them being able to put a hand on him like he had done so many times before. But he didn't. Now, I can tell you firsthand, Jesus went voluntarily to the cross. He said his hour had come. I'm embarrassed to say that I ran away. We all did. We were scared. They took Jesus to Anias' place. That was a real racket. Four of his sons had been high priests, and now Caiaphas was the high priest, and they made their money at the animal bazaar, as it was called, where they sold their own sacrificial animals and rejected what the people brought. And then they finally took him to Caiaphas's and Peter wanted to go where Jesus was. I was known to the high priest, so I went with him to the gate and I was able to get him in. And while Peter denied Jesus three times before the rooster crowed, nobody knew that. But he told all of us, so we could record it in all four Gospels. And he would say that if I I denied Jesus in his biggest time of need and he loved me and used me, he can use you too. Well, they led him away to Pilate, and Pilate tried to stay neutral. I'll tell you, it's impossible to stay neutral of Jesus. I spent a good time of my life running down a fence with one hand in the world and one hand in the church. Jesus said, you're not with me. You are against me. There's no in-between. Well, Pilate wanted to let Jesus go, and there was this custom at the Passover that they would release one prisoner. And so they had the zealot Barabbas and then Jesus. And I couldn't believe it. All those people who had shouted Hosanna just a couple days before were yelling for Barabbas and to crucify Jesus. I remember frantically running around the crowd trying to get people to yell for Jesus. 
But it was over, and Pilate washed his hands in the basin, and the worst unspeakable moments of my life happened. Jesus was forced to carry that cross to the place they called the skull. And when he fell and was having trouble, they made Simon from Cyrene carry that cross. Well, they crucified him. They cast lots for his clothes. And unbelievably, as he hung there in the midst of all this, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I think about how many times he said that to me in my life. They hurled insults at him in a deep darkness like I've never seen came across the midday. That shut him up. One thief was going back and forth with the other, and he was rebuked by the other thief who placed his faith in Jesus. And Jesus told him, surely you will be with me in paradise today. And then Jesus asked me to care for his mother. And then it was over. We were devastated, afraid, confused, lost. That day that's called Good Friday, it was terrible. Joseph of Aramina came and asked Pilate for the body, and Nicodemus brought 75 pounds of myrrh and aloes, and they wrapped the body and placed it in the tomb. It was horrible. All hope was lost. But then came that Easter Sunday, that first Easter Sunday. It was so glorious where hope will never stop, that it will be restored forever. You see, while it was still dark, the women were on the way to the tomb, and as they were on their way, they were talking about how they would even get into the tomb. But when they arrived, they saw that the stone had been removed, and Mary came running to Peter and I. She said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and I ran to the tomb, and I beat him there, but waited for him. And we both went in and saw the linen set aside. We were trying to process it all, but Mary stayed and saw two angels sitting there after we left where, Peter, where Jesus had laid. And they said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. And then Jesus appeared to Mary, and she cried out, Rabboni, which means teacher. And he said, don't cling to me. I have not returned to the Father yet. But go tell my brothers that I'm returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. But we had no idea what to make of all this, and we were worried that now that Jesus' body was missing, that the Romans or the Jews were going to come for us and try to say that we stole it. So we were locked in a room, and out of nowhere, Jesus comes in, and he stands in our midst, and he says, Peace be with you. He showed us our hands, his hands inside, and he said, As the Father sends me, I'm sending you. And one week later, he appeared to us again, and Thomas was there that time, to which he declared, My Lord and my God. Well, to be honest, we were still trying to figure out exactly how we were to be working for Jesus, and we weren't sure, so Peter said, I'm going fishing. And so we all went along, and it was a long night where we didn't catch anything, but on the way in in the morning, we saw someone on the shore, and he asked if we had anything, and we said no, and he said, well, cast your net on the other side. And we knew it was the Lord, and we caught a huge haul and came in, and he cooked us fish. And he told us that our purpose was to go out and care and promote the gospel, care for his people. Well, a few weeks later, he ascended right before our eyes, and we have the promise that he'll return again. Well, I hear that Pastor Steve has a tradition of having a story before you're through, so I thought I'd throw one in. I met a young man not too long ago who dives for exotic fish for aquariums, and he said one of the most popular aquarium fish is a shark. He explained that if you catch a small shark and confine it, it will stay in a size proportional to the aquarium. So another way of saying it is a shark can be six inches long, but he's still fully matured. But if you take that shark and let him loose in the ocean, they grow to their normal length of eight feet. 
And my question to all of us during this time is, as Christians, what size body of water are we swimming in? Are we a six-inch Christian swimming in a small pool? Or do we need to be put into a larger body of water, into a new creation where we can become great? And so the rest of this Easter or this evening or sometime this week, I would reflect that giving all that he's done for you, what more can you be doing for him? Perhaps you came here out of obligation today or you're listening to the live stream and you really don't know Jesus as personal Lord and Savior. The scriptures tell us that if we confess Jesus as Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that your name could be written in the Lamb's book of life right now. You could be sealed by the Holy Spirit. Your eternity would be secure. And you could join us in the commission that we received from Jesus. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I've commanded And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. My friends, he is risen. He is risen indeed, and I saw it firsthand. And I hope that your name is written in that Lamb's book of life, that you can join me in heaven forever where every day is Easter, because you're worth it. Let's pray. Dear God, we do thank you for your incredible love that's beyond what we can fathom, comprehend, and understand. And we just pray that we would live lives that are pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to come to the communion table today. It certainly is a special time to be doing that. If I could have those come forward who are going to assist On that Thursday night when they had that Passover dinner, Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
body of Christ broken for us. Eat. Then Jesus took the cup and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for you. Drink this and do this in remembrance of me. The cup of the new covenant, drink of it. Dear God, thank you for shedding blood for our sins to be forgiven, past, present, and future. And help us to live from you and not be encumbered by past mistakes. In Jesus' name, amen. Going to go ahead and rise and sing our final hymn, number 372, Our God Reigns.
Our God does reign, and may the God of peace who raised from the dead our Lord Jesus provide us with every good thing that we need to do his will. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Happy Easter.